Welcome to In My Opinion. It is said that everyone is entitled to their own opinion, regardless of how you or I may see or view it. Some things we will agree with, and some we will outrightly disagree with. Some may spark a conversation, or God forbid, some may even spark an argument. But regardless which way the wind blows, like you, I am entitled to my opinion. My name is Tony Bogle, and agree or disagree, welcome to my opinion. Feel free to let yours be heard. It is said that in everything, context matters. But unfortunately, when it comes to many Jamaicans, it's as if that fact doesn't even matter. So on that basis alone, I approach this presentation with a bit of caution, and trust that I won't be attacked and lambasted, because regardless of the emotions attached, agree or disagree, context still matters, so let's get into it, with the hope that you see the angle from which this is coming. Recently, dancehall recording artist Mr. Vegas went at dancehall queen Spice with what many of her fans are saying were disparaging remarks after he checked her with a post that made it clear, in no uncertain terms, that Spice was a mediocre recording artist who was only riding the wave left by Lady Saw's conversion to Christianity. Factually, the post read, she is not talented enough to become a musical icon. Hence, her theatrics and histrionics stand supreme to her musical contribution to dancehall. But like I said earlier, context matters, so let's analyze Vegas's argument a little closer while taking a look at the evidence, because bestie or no bestie, Vegas might be onto something here. The post came about due to Spice's 2085T, which many are saying is her making an attempt to stir the waters with the intention being to get the attention of the masses. Let's take a closer look at the argument and the facts. And please note for the record, I am not a Mr. Vegas advocate, nor am I a Spice hater. I am just a journalist giving my unbiased professional opinion on a matter that has made it into the public stream of conversations. After reading Mr. Vegas's post, and then reading some of the comments, I decided to delve into the matter a little deeper, because although most of the comments were in Spice's favor, when the facts are brought to light and lined up against Mr. Vegas's argument. Although many were in her favor, the facts are just the facts, and leave me to ask the obvious. How did Spice become the Queen of Dancehall anyway? What is the criteria for being the Queen of Dancehall? Because it can't be music. Couldn't be. How could it when Spice does not have one of the top five female dancehall anthems under her belt? So it can't be music. So is Mr. Vegas right about her mediocrity and theatrics? Because when the facts are analyzed, the reality may surprise you. Facts that are literally undeniable. When it comes to the queen of the dancehall argument, if you know anything about the genre, then you will be aware that Lady Saw is the first name that pops to mind almost automatically, and rightfully so because she has done it on stage and in the studio. She was also loved by the masses, so there can be little argument there. And when you look at her track record and accolades, then the reason becomes even clearer. She was the one, and to some she is still the one, and understandably so, because although now a Christian, and no longer active in the space. Spice, although active and now holding the title, has yet to find a song as big as, or bigger than, Man of Delice, or If the Man Left. Two of Lady Saw's biggest dancehall songs, both of which are considered female anthems to this date. Then there is Macca Diamond, one of Spice's arch nemesis, who although not as popular amongst the masses as Spice, or Lady Saw, but cannot be denied her due. Because like Lady Saw, Macca also has at least two songs that Spice is yet to top. The two songs being Bun Him With Blacker and Die Die, both of which are monster songs compared to Spice's biggest hit, and both of which are also in the category of female dancehall anthems. I know many Spice fans are going to be up in arms and may be quick to say, Na song na bigger dan, romping shop and truth be told, big as that song is. It is not a female anthem. It is a bad song. A hit song. A monster song, but a female anthem is a song like Lifestyle by Yannick and Ball Out by Dovey Magnum. Songs that make females get wild, and although Yannick nor Davi are as big as Spice, both Davi and Yannick have female anthems, and Spice does not. So does Mr. Vegas have a point about her mediocrity, which leave the unanswered question, how did she become the Queen of Dancehall again? I know fans of Spice may disagree, but I am just analyzing the facts, because if we are talking about being the Queen of a certain thing, or a certain arena, that would mean that such a person dominates said space more like a Serena and a Venus Williams, whose status can never be questioned once they are active, which is very much so when it comes to a lady saw, because her dominance cannot and was never questioned on stage or on record, but when it comes to Spice being hailed the queen of the dance hall, questions pop up. Because although she has dominated the stage, she has not dominated the space, at least not when it comes to musical accomplishments. Truth be told, she is not even a leading contender in the space, if music is what the criteria of being hailed queen of the dance hall is based or founded on which I believe it should, and only makes sense if it did, seeing that we are talking about a specific genre 
or a specific arena, dancehall music being both the genre and the arena. Think about it for a second. Does Spice have a song as big as or bigger than Tanya Stevens? It's a pity another female dancehall anthem. So how can she be considered the queen of the dancehall when she has not dominated the space with a song that solidifies her claim to the throne? Then again, maybe it's not the music like Mr. Vega said, but her crown is more based on theatrics opposed to musical prowess. I know it may sound like it, but this by no stretch of the imagination is an attempt to dethrone Spice. On the contrary, all I am doing is analyzing the facts based on what I believe should be the foundation on which this throne stands. Dancehall music, a space yet to be dominated by the acknowledged queen, if indeed music is what it is based on. Because although a newcomer, this may shock many, but Spice does not even have a song like Shaniel Muir's Yama Bella, another female anthem. And let's not forget that there is also Vanessa Bling's monster collab, One Man. Yet another song in the realm of female favorites, which Spice is yet to talk. So with that said, and all those mentioned, except for Lady Saw, the only previously acknowledged queen of the dancehall, all able to stand predominant on their music, Spice simply cannot do the same. Her story is different. Some may disagree and say I am reaching or say this argument sounds like a stretch, but if she does have a song big as, or bigger than, any of the previously mentioned songs, please feel free to identify said song in comment section. There is no doubt that she is the queen of the stage, or theatrics, as Mr. Vegas puts it, and she can be also considered the queen of flamboyance, always outshining her co-workers in the costume and stage presentation department. But it stops there. She does not dominate the space musically, and there can be little, if any, argument there. But this is my opinion. Yours might be different. And when I say identify a song of hers, which is big as, or bigger than any of the previously mentioned songs, please don't jump in the comment section and talk about views on any platform, because although that carries some weight, we all know that contrary to what we have been told about numbers not lying, in this case, numbers do lie, especially in this internet age. We all know what we mean when we say it's a big or a monster song. So please, leave the inflated numbers out of the argument. And if you are naming a song or few, please do so and let's converse from there. No one asked me for my opinion, but it is mine. And like you, I do as I please with it. And this is my take on the matter. From my perspective, this entire Queen of the Dancehall title has lost its luster and has evolved now into a marketing and a popularity contest, with very little to do with musical ability or accomplishments. With Lady Saw walking away from the throne, there was a vacancy, and regardless who was active at the moment, Spice simply had the better marketing team, the personality that the people gravitated to, and she came with the theatrics that they enjoyed. It's as simple as that. She won the popularity and marketing contest, and that is what this title has been reduced to. Sure, some are going to disagree, but if you disagree, how do you explain the call for Shen Xia to be crowned the new queen of the dance hall when she, like Spice, does not have the musical accolades, but instead has more than what Spice had at her ascension, or more popularity than Maka, Tanya, or any other female active at the time? I know there are going to be those who disagree with my opinion on the matter, and are going to be quick to say, Spice does have the bigger songs. And to those I say, that is your opinion, and I respect it. But to those same folks I would issue a challenge. And the challenge is this, pick the party, any party, and in the heat of the juggling, drop any one of the songs mentioned in this overview, and see the reaction compared to your best Spice picks. And this is regardless of what the numbers say on any platform. Like I said earlier, this is not an attempt to dethrone Spice in any way, shape, or form. All I am doing is analyzing a situation and presenting my opinion, an opinion based solely on what I would presume and would think only makes sense that the foundation or title of Queen of the Dance Hall is built on musical accomplishments first. But then again, maybe my analysis is wrong, and this whole Queen of the Dance Hall fiasco is built on some other elements that I am not aware of. Who knows? Either way, let me know what you think in the comment section. Until next time, walk good and never forget, we are all entitled to our own opinions.